friends, it is Mrs. Carter and I get to be part of the October book club. I get to read a little bit of the one and only Ivan. So it is Tuesday on uh, our week off and hopefully you are uh, sleeping in and maybe enjoying a good book uh, and maybe even just following along with us and that's awesome. So I get to start off where Mrs. Miller um, ended. So we're on page 154 and this is says poor, it's called poor Mac. Mac groans. He stumbles to his feet and hobbles off toward his office. Ruby watches him leave. I can't read her expression. Is she afraid? Relieved? Proud? When Mac is gone, George and Julia lead Ruby from the ring. It's okay, baby. It's okay, Julia says, stroking Ruby's head. They settle Ruby in her domain and make sure she has fresh water and food. Before long, Ruby's dozing. Dad? Julia asks as George locks Ruby's iron door. Do you think Mac would ever hurt Ruby? I don't think so, Jules, George says. At least I hope not. Maybe we could call someone. George scratches his chin. I wish I could help Ruby, but I won't know how. I, I mean, who would we call? The elephant cops? Besides, George looks down. I need this job, Jules. We need this job. Your mom, the doctor bills. He kisses the top of Julia's head. Back to work, you and me both. Julia sighs <clears throat> and reaches for her backpack. She removes a piece of paper, a bottle of water, and a small metal box. Homework first, George says, wagging a finger. Then you can paint. It's for art class, Julia explains. We're doing watercolors. I'm going to paint Ruby. George smiles. All right then. Just don't forget your spelling. Dad, Julie asks again, did you see Mac's face when Ruby hit him? George nods. Yes, he said solemnly. I did. He shakes his head. Poor Mac. He turns away. And only then do I hear him laughing. <laughs> Probably deserved it a little bit, huh? Colors. Julia opens the metal box. I see a row of little squares, orange, blue, red, black, yellow, purple, orange. The colors seem to glow. She pulls out a brush with a thin tuft of a tail at its end. She dips the brush in water and wets the paint, then taps all, or sorry, taps at the red square. When the brush meets the damp paper, pink petals of color unfurl like morning flowers. I can't take my eyes off of that magical brush. For a moment, I'm not thinking about Ruby and Mac and the claw stick and Stella, almost. Julia touches red again, then blue, and there suddenly is the purple of a ripe grape. She touches the blue, then her paper turns to summer sky, black and white, and now I see that she is painting a picture of Ruby I can make out her floppy ears and her thick legs. Julia stops painting. She takes a few steps back, hands on her hips, gazing at her work. She scowls. Mm, it's not right, she says. She glances over her shoulder at me. I tried to look encouraging. Julia starts to crumple up the paper and then reconsiders. Instead, she slides it into my cage at the spot where my glass is broken. Here you go, she says, a Julia original. That'll be worth millions someday. Gingerly, I take the paper. I do not eat a single bite of it. Hey, oh, I almost forgot. Julia runs to her backpack. She pulls out three plastic jars, one yellow, one blue, and one red. She opens the jars and an odd not food smell hits my nose. Julia pushes the jars one by one through the opening. Then she slides some paper through. These are called finger paints, she says. My aunt gave them to me, but really I'm too old for finger painting. I stick a finger into the red jar. The paint is thick as mud. It's cool and smooth like bananas underfoot. I pop my finger into my mouth. It's not exactly ripe mango, but it's not bad. 
Julia laughs. You don't eat it, you paint with it. She grabs a piece of paper and presses her finger on it. See, like this. I place my finger on a piece of paper. I lift it and a red mark is there. I get a bigger glob from the pot and slap my hand down on the page. When I pull my hand off the paper, its red twin stays behind. This isn't like the ghostly handprints on my glass, the ones my visitors leave behind. This handprint can be so, this handprint can't be so easily wiped away. And here is a picture of his paw, his handprint with the red on the paper. <clears throat> Next page, a bad dream. I lay awake, peeling dried red paint off my fingertips. Bob, who accidentally walked on one of my paintings, is licking his red paws. Every so often, I glance over at the empty ring. The cloth stick glints in the moonlight. Stop! No! Ruby's frantic cries startle me. Ruby! I call. You're having a bad dream. You're okay. You're safe. Where's Stella? She asks, gulping air. Before I can answer, she says, never mind. I remember now. Go back to sleep, Ruby, I say. You've had a bad day. You've had a hard day. I can't go back to sleep, she says. I'm afraid I'll have the same dream. There was a sharp stick and it hurt. I look at Bob and he looks back at me. Oh, Ruby says, oh. Mac, she puts her trunk between the bars. Do you think, she hesitates, do you think Mac is mad because I heard him today? I consider lying, but gorillas are terrible liars. Probably, I finally said. He ran away after that, Ruby says. Bob gives a scornful laugh. Crawled away is more like it. We are quiet for a while, branches, claw at the roof, a light rain drums. One of the parrots murmurs something in her sleep. Ruby breaks the silence. Ivan, I smell something funny. He can't help it, Bob says. I believe she's referring to the finger paints Julia gave me, I say. What are finger paints, Ruby asks. You make pictures with them, I explain. Could you make a picture of me? Well, maybe someday. I remember Julia's picture, the one that will be worth a million dollars. I hold it up to the glass. Look, it's you. Julia made it. It's hard to see, Ruby says. There's not much moonlight. Why do I have two trunks? I explain the picture. Those are feet. Why do I have two feet? That's called artistic license, Bob says. Ruby sighs. Could you tell me another story, she asks. I don't think I can ever go back to sleep. I told you all I remember, I say with a helpless shrug. Then tell me a new story, she says. Maybe make something up. I try to think, but my thoughts keep returning to Mac and his claw stick. Anything yet, Ruby asks. I'm working on it. Ivan, Ruby presses. Bob said you were going to save me. I... I search for true words. I'm working on that too. Ivan, Ruby says in a voice so low I can barely hear. I have another question. I can tell from the sound of her voice that this will be a question I don't want to answer. Ruby taps her trunk against the rusty iron, iron bars of her door. Do you think, she asks, that I'll die in this domain someday like Aunt Stella? Once again, I consider lying. But when I look at Ruby, the half-formed words die in my throat. Not if I can help it, I said instead. I feel something tighten in my chest, something dark and hot. And it's not a domain, I add. I pause and then I say, it's a cage. All right, friends, I am going to stop for now. We are at 165, so we'll be starting 166. And probably Mrs. Miller will probably read the next part. But thank you for listening and watching. And hello, William, if you're watching. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great break. And we will see you next week. All right, bye.